No, it's a great question, Darren. And, and clearly, uh, IEEE being a broad global organization, this has different flavors to it. So if you look at regions seven through 10, uh, you, you, you'll see a different picture compared to regions one through six. So if I, if I look at the United States, you know, which is where we are right now, and we have you know, members from around the world who are participating in this call, uh, it, it's really about relevance, right? The question about relevance. So industry engagement, IEEE has an industry engagement society, uh, committee, excuse me, that reports to the board. Uh, that's looking at corporate memberships to bring companies to the fold. I believe Lockheed Martin was the first company that signed on. Uh, in Hong Kong, we have Hong Kong Telecom, which is currently, th that agreement is going to end at the end of 2020 or may have already ended in 2019. But we have to bring industry to the, to, to the table. Uh, because when you sit across the table and you talk to people about what they do and who they work for, you find that they're working for all these top companies or they're startup companies, they're an entrepreneur, etc. So I think we need to uh, get the message out to industry about the value of IEEE membership. And more importantly, for the top level management in those companies to support the engineers whom they're hiring about the importance of professional development and membership in IEEE. Years ago, uh, Hewlett Packard, Intel, all of these companies strongly encourage their employees to take an active role in professional societies. So that culture has to come back again. And I think we can do that. Uh, we also have the, the business about uh, the drop off between student membership to young professionals. And there's a lot of ideas out there, ad hocs out there that have come up with ideas. At the last sections Congress, uh, there was an idea to have uh, a one stop shop for all sections to post their ideas and then uh, have uh, other sections look at best practices, if you will. So it's not that if you do it in region eight, it cannot be replicated in region six or region five or region 10. So I think we need to be thinking across the segments of our membership, what makes sense. You look at women in engineering, 20,000 members, it's one of the strongest affinity groups, right? How do we support those kinds of activities? How do we support the entrepreneurship group? How do we support the chapters that Nick is talking about in solid state circuits? I believe the answer is all of the above. And, and really, it's not a question of year over year, we're declining. I want to say, let's set a target and say, if 13,000 non-members are attending a virtual conference, something in the IEEE attracted them to attend. I think it behooves us to find out what it is. It's something in our DNA. It's something that we do, something that we create, something that they value. And if there is a way for us to build around that, through our organization, through our various committees, through our boards and structures, and offer it to members, I think we have a very successful story. It won't happen overnight, Darren. Again, proud of what you do in uh, Bienaventura. I mean, as a section chair, I think you have probably the second or the third highest retention rate. And I know what you do because I've come to your meetings. You literally pick up the phone and call members and find out what their concerns are and invite them to, to renew. It's that personal touch that somebody needs uh, to belong to the IEEE.